Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How you guys doing today? Hi, Donna. Hi, Leah. Hi, Fran. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Ginger. Good morning. I got on a little early, so forgive me for that. <laughs> what I was um, trying to do was making sure that everything would go on smoothly. Sunny! I know we got some sunshine too, Donna. I'm so excited. Hi, Stacy. Stacy, you might be getting our rain from yesterday. Sorry if so. <laughs> Good morning, Angela and Linda. How you guys all doing today? Judy. Good morning, Judy in Missouri. I hope it's beautiful there today. It is so gorgeous out today. We had a day yesterday that was so dreary and rainy, and it is just gorgeous. Hey, Stacy! thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Good morning, Pat. With frost. Holy cow, Fran. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm so tired of this whole winter is trying to uh, keep, keep coming back again. It's like boomerang. Good morning from Wisconsin. So we have two options today, ladies. And I'm sure maybe there might be a gentleman on here somewhere if anybody decided to hop on. Good morning, Robin. I know. I'm not sure. We're going to have to see which way it goes. Thanks for sharing. Thank you guys all for the shares and the hearts and the loves and everything. I really appreciate that. All the comments. It helps to get me seen. And make sure that, um, again, when you're watching, this little button up here is red. That means that we're live. So if you're watching this after the fact and there's no little red button up there, it means we're not live. But you still can leave a comment. From the UK. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, you still can leave a comment and I'm going to draw something today. I know I missed last Wednesday, so I apologize for that. I am going to draw something today at the end. Well, after the live, I should say, because I have to get my little fancy stuff ready. But I am going to pick a winner for something. So make sure you leave a comment. Any comment. Hi. Hello. It's sunny. It's rainy. I love ReachTheStamper.com. Just kidding. <laughs> um, we are going to have a blog hop coming up this Saturday at 10 o'clock. You can get started at ReachTheStamper.com. It is a Mother's Day theme blog hop, which sometimes I have a mental block on. I have a hard time coming up with Mother's Day cards. Um, sadly, since I lost my mom, it just makes it a little bit weird. However, I do still try to make something for everyone else. We did a, a club list Friday and... Um, I didn't have any Mother's Day cards and I felt kind of bad. But the reason I, I skipped past the Mother's Day card is because all the Father's Day stuff, which is in the occasions catalog, will be gone by the time Father's Day get here. gets here. It'll be all be retired. So, good morning, Janet and Eileen and Cindy, Stephanie. Thank you all for sharing. All right, so here's our choices today. I love racesstanford.com. Oh, Donna, I love you. You know I love you. <laughs> So here's our two choices. I'm going to show you the two cards we can make. We can either make A or B. Okay? So we can either make this really cool. This is a fun fold. And whichever one we don't make, I'll make a video for. But I made this one last week. How fun is this? So this uses some retiring things because... The Happiest of Days stamp set will be retiring, and Sweet Sugar Plum, which I'm going to tell you, I was not a fan of Sweet Sugar Plum at first. I really, really, really wasn't, but now, now that it's retiring, it's kind of grown on me a little bit, so we can either do this one, and this is something that my friend Rhonda found on um, Pinterest, so you, now here's two things I'm going to show you. When you do this card, it won't stand up when you do it this way. So if you want it to stand, you'd have to make it sideways. But it's a double Z-fold card. But you can easily swap this over. It's really, really simple to turn it sideways. So if you wanted one to be like this, it's a beautiful card. And it kind of hides the other little messages there. And this is using some of this gorgeous new designer series paper, the Share What You Love Suite. So this has kind of got like a combo. And then if we did this one here with uh, Mr. Flamingo, which everyone loves, I was going to do this one with the lily pad. And this is going to be with the uh, egret slash heron. A and B. There you go, Fran. That's my girl. And then this one, we're kind of doing a combo too because this has some island indigo, which is going to be retiring. I'm so sorry. I'm so sad. But I am bought myself a re-inker and another box of paper. I have two fresh stacks of paper because I do love island indigo. I started just a teeny bit early, Mary, just a little bit because I was trying to uh, make some decisions here. So 
you haven't missed anything really yet. So if we do the flamingo, it's going to be in Calypso Coral and Island Indigo. And if not, we will do Happiest of Days in Sweet Sugar Plum. All right, so I saw a lot of A's. I saw B. I saw A's and B's. Thank you for sharing. Flamingo card with the lily pad. B, look at that. Oh, geez, this is a tight one today. Very tight. So I also have for the lily pad, I have the framelits, which I haven't used these yet. Can you believe it? I have not used these. We could also use the high tide for the water. And there's another stamp set that you can use. You could use this for like the little watermark that he would be standing in. So it kind of just depends on what we want to do. A, B, B, B. I know the flamingo, but the double Z. The double Z is a really simple card. I'll tell you that. All right. I'm seeing A, B. I'm, hold on. I'm, I'm doing a little menti, mental tally. B, E, B, A. A lot of Bs. <laughs> A lot of bees. I see a lot of bees. All right, all you A people, it's coming coming down to it. I see B. Hi, Brina. Good morning, Bobby. Let's do both. I don't have that much time, Darcy. I have some things I have to get done. I'm a little behind. <laughs> I promise, though, I will make a video for the other one, whichever one I don't do. I promise I will make a video for. A. A. All right. The next three are going to be the deciding factors, and I think it's going with the bees. A. Oh, A, Pamela and Eileen and Jennifer. <laughs> Mary, we're talking about what card we're going to make. We have this birthday wishes as a double Z fold card. Or we're going to make the flamingo, but instead we're going to use this new uh, lily pad lake stamp set. So that's what we're deciding. Bees. I don't know. I see lots of bees. All right. We're going to go with B. What's more important than stamping for us? Nothing, except picking up my son, but that's not till 11.20. But I don't think you want to watch two hours of videos, do you? <laughs> All right. Well, I just got a huge sweep of A's. B's if I have to pick one. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this one real quick. I can't, I can't not make everyone happy. We're going to do this one real quick because it's a simple card. And I'll put all the measurements on the blog for you, and then we'll, we'll do this. So we'll do both. Just because I love you guys. So you remember that. I always try to make you happy. <laughs> All right. So this stamp set, we're going to get started. We're going to do we're going to do the quick one first because this one is definitely much quicker. So this is a, a double Z fold card. Yes, I can watch two hours of salmon. Do you have your coffee? You're ready. Everyone's going to the bathroom. They have their snacks and their beverages. So we're going to get started. <laughs> okay. So let me once once more, I'm going to just show you this. This is super simple. It's very, very simple. I have everything already pre-scored and cut and whatnot. But again, this won't stand up. It looks absolutely beautiful when it's closed, but it will not stand up on its own. So if that's a deal breaker for you, you're going to just want to make sure you turn your stuff sideways, which is very, very simple to do. And actually, so we made this card last week too, and I had some ladies that turned it sideways. It was very simple. So we're going to get some smoky Slate. And I'm going to show you how to do it the other way. So ours will stand like this. That way it will stand up on its own. Okay, so this is the demo card. So we have a piece of sweet sugar plum. This is just a regular piece of cardstock, a long length piece, four and a quarter by 11. You're going to score it at five and a half. And then I'm trying to think the way I did this. Did I do it at two and three quarters? Pardon me, I got to get my ruler out real quick. So I scored it at two and three quarters. And then it's going to be scored at five and a half, okay? So what this is going to do is it's going to fold in like this. You're going to fold one in and one out, just like that, okay? Very simple. So there's one of your Zs. And then we have this other piece, and this is Smoky Slate. And I believe this is three, three by nine. And you're going to score it, yep, three by nine. You're going to score it at three and six. So same thing, you're going to fold one in and fold one out. So you have your double Zs, super duper simple. And we are going to um, make this so it's we're going to use our bone folder to cre make the creases really strong. Okay? My phone is portable. You're hilarious. <laughs> All right. And then we have some squares. So these are two and three quarters square. Now, I originally have, these are a teeny bit longer if they go crossways because I kind of think it took away from the squareness of it, if that makes sense. So when I originally cut these, these layers here are a little bit wider. But if you're going to want to make this fit 
a little bit more uniformly, you're going to want to cut these down to two and three quarters. So for this, this one that's a sideways card, I have two and three quarters, two and three quarters. So you'll need two white panels and then your middle panel is two and three quarters as well. Okay. These are a little bit off. They are, I think like three. Yeah, this one's three by like two and three quarters. So they're kind of not really a square. So this way I, I had them just be a little bit longer. I think it looks a little more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so what we're going to do, let me move these two out of the way because all we need to do right now is stamp. And since they are squares, it doesn't really matter. You can stamp them whichever direction and lay them on there. So what I did was I used the birthday wishes. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to grab a block. I did birthday wishes. And then I did um, happiest birthday, happiest of days to you, I should say, on the inside. And I will tell you, this stamp set, because of the way this stamp is lined up, it's a little bit crooked. So this could be one that if you wanted to pull out your Stamparatus for, that might be a good idea. Or even your um, Stampamajig, which is retiring. In case you didn't know that, the Stampamajig is retiring. So um, the Stampamajig... It's very, very good, especially if you have wood blocks. So if you have wood blocks and you're concerned about things being straight, you might want to get your hands on this before it's gone. But it comes with this clear sheet and then this little square. And what you basically do, I'm going to show you what you do. This is very simple to use, but if you've not used it, you're going to kind of be not perplexed, but some people don't understand how to use it if they've never used it. So what you do is you put your stamp. Hi, Rhonda. This is Rhonda's card. She's the one that found this and brought it to me. Um, you're going to put your block, put your stamp on your block. You're going to ink it up and then you're going to put your clear piece up here in the corner where your stamp and jig is. So you have your clear sheet and it's two-sided. One side's a little rougher. It doesn't really matter which one you're using. Stamp faster. I'm working. This is a two-hour show, Rhonda. Didn't you realize we just made that decision? So you're going to ink up your stamp, and then you're going to stamp it squarely. And you can use this with the clear blocks or with the wood blocks. You're going to stamp it just like that. It doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it's on there and you can see it. So if you wanted to do that in black, stays on. Doesn't come off of this as easily, though. But the archival ink usually wash, uh, wipes off pretty quickly. So then what you're going to do is you take, move these things out of the way, you take your um, your stamp and you kind of line it up how you want it. Now you notice on this, this does not line up at all. Let me just slide these over so I can see. This doesn't, it looks crooked, but on here it's going to be straight. So then you're going to take your stamp -a jig and you're going to put it back here so this meets in the corner, just like that. You will get your ink back out. Tap it and just set this right in the corner, just like it is. And hopefully I didn't botch this up. And now it would be straight. So this would look, even though this was one here all crooked, if I laid it down, except it'll smudge it, that lines up exactly. And then all you do with this is you just take your little towel and you wipe it off. You could use like a wet cloth or whatever. You wipe it off and you can use it over again. So this thing is really, really great, especially if you have wood block stamps that are a little difficult to position. And obviously you can't use your um, Stamparatus on wood block. So if you still have wood blocks, this is something that maybe you might want to might get your hands on before it's gone. <sighs> what is this, sweet Lord? The Rainbow Stamper guy, he's at school. Rainbow Stamper's at school right now. All right, I see I closed this up ahead of time. Now we just have to stamp our other sentiment. See what happens when I watch the comments and I stop paying attention to what I'm doing. So I'm going to take my birthday wishes and I'm kind of going to just eyeball this, line it up in the middle. And that looks pretty good considering, wow, that was a miracle's happen. And then what I did was I went back and I added in the little rows just to kind of fill in some spots. So I filled in here, kind of down at the bottom. And if you wanted to, you could put a rose on here or you could even put this little like the little scripty flourish that's really cute with the vines you could put that on there if you wanted to add something with just a little bit more color on this i'm gonna put it on the top actually there you go so just like a little something you could also pop your flower on the top there if you wanted to that looks cute so then all you're gonna do and this is what i did i'm gonna show you without hopefully making a huge mess here is I took 
my sweet sugar plum marker because I wanted something to kind of stick with the color. And I took powder pink and then I also used pear pizzazz, which is retiring. So pear pizzazz and sweet sugar plum, these are gone. But the combination on these was really very, very pretty. So I kind of give it like gave it like a moment or so to dry. And then what I did was I took my marker and I just colored in the little leaves here. You could use, if you don't have your marker too, you could use your blender pen and your ink pads. That will work just as well. Do this on the rose. And then I'm going to show you, I did this actually two different ways. And somebody at the at the club class on Friday did this so much more beautifully than I did that I told her, I said, she should be teaching the class because she did it really, really lovely. I know I love my stamp a jig too. I don't use it very often, but when I do, and I'm always like, why do I always forget to get this out? Because it really is a very useful tool for lining things up. Okay, so now you can take your... Um, your broad tip so your marker tip of your powder pink and I kind of just filled this in all around fill in your whole rose and then what she did was I originally went in you can see for one of them I colored it kind of dark what she did was she went in with her pen tip of her sweet sugar plum and she kind of outlined here and it really made it look super super pretty and of course she said, you know, she doesn't really know what she's doing. She's not great at coloring. It was her first card. I don't know if she's watching or not, but Janelle did that last week. And it turned out so beautifully. So you could do that. Or if you wanted to, you could go ahead in again with your powder pink. We'll just do this one on the bottom one. And if you wanted something a little bit more fat and juicy with your color. Another thing that I find, and again, I, I'm no flower expert, but I find that your color is usually more concentrated in the center of a flower. So I kind of did mine with the broad tip. That way it would have a little bit more of that deeper hue. And then you could kind of, once you get to the outer edges a little bit, make it a little bit softer. And use your pen tip. Just like that. Kind of trace the outline of it. But this is a super pretty card. And then the other thing I did, just to kind of tie it all together is I took, again, the um, marker tip, and I just go around the edge, just to kind of finish off the edge of the card. You could do this with your sponge if you wanted to, but if you already have your markers out, sometimes I think it's just simpler just to do it like this. There you go. And then again, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this in just a little bit, that way once I finish it, it'll be fully done. You could do it backwards as well. This is what I did the first time, was I filled in the darker part with the sweet sugar plum and then I went back in and kind of filled in with the powder pink. Oh, forgot about this little guy down here. Just add a little bit to him. And go ahead and with my brush tip of the powder pink and kind of brought them together a little bit. And you can certainly take your time. Do it. You could fill in even one of these little little flowers here you have the little veins in your leaves you could fill those in as well so and I'm gonna do the uh, powder pink on this one just that way it's a little softer and I'll show you one other cool thing that I did that I thought really gave a lot of oh whoopsie a lot of detail that's where you got to be careful gave a lot of detail was I did little dots just with my little tips of the um, the pen tips of the marker and I did them in threes because apparently somewhere in life someone decided that threes are very pleasing to look at odd numbers are much more pleasing. So remember that when you're stamping. If you're stamping flowers, for example, so you have your, your one here, your three. I don't know why, but apparently three things that are in threes or in odd numbers are much more pleasing to look at. So I just went through and added those. You could add some with the, um, the powder pink as well if you wanted to. But it kind of just, like, really without a lot of effort, gave a little bit more of a, a bling to this card. So then... The only thing you have to do is you take your little, and this, the only thing that's hard about this, you have to decide which one you want to use because this is really pretty. It's got flower names on it, so you could use this easily if you wanted to switch it up. And this paper pack, do I have this handy? It does not even actually have any sweet sugar plum in it because this is in the new catalog, but I thought it looked so beautiful. 
and it has this little if you can see that it's got like this reflective quality to it it's like almost like a vellum overlay but it's not it is so 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 beautiful i mean all of the the pieces of this they have a little bit of something to them they're all so pretty then you have the stripes and the like more of a wildflower look which that kind of wildflower is almost similar to that wildflower paper we had a while back. You have one that has just leaves all over it, and then it's got these other little shiny flowers. It is really a gorgeous, gorgeous pack. And this is going to be available for pre-order May 1st. It's called the Share What You Love Specialty Designer Series Paper. And there's a lot of paper in here, and it's very heavy. It's got a much heavier feel than just your regular old um, Designer Series paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put this down with some snail okay so I'm gonna put this one on the top because this will be my top card Let me pick this up before I stick that accidentally this is the spot where you can add your little sentiment and again if this is too big you can put something smaller there as well and then this one just goes right in the center okay just press those down. I was trying to make sure I don't have any ink on my fingers. But this is a beautiful card. It really, it's very simple. Not a lot of work to this. I mean, look, all we did was color in those little things, a little bit of stamping, and some designer series paper. So super easy to make. I just want to just press this just a little bit with my bone folder. And then the same thing with this. Now, one thing I did forget, and this is optional, but this is something you could do. What I did was I ran this through my big shot once I put this together. I just ran the top through and the bottom, and this one I did backwards, you can see. I did them facing the wrong direction, like a ding dong. So this one's facing correctly. It looks a little bit prettier, but I did this with the softly falling embossing folder, but you could do this with any embossing folder that you had. So it kind of gives like a whole extra level of pretty to it, really without much work. All right, so let me score this, or burnish this, or whatever it is I'm calling it these days. So we have this. And we have our other layer, just like that. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is the part that's just a teeny bit tricky, is that you just have to make sure you take your time, really. Because once you put it on here, you could do this with um, Tombow liquid glue. would make it easier if you wanted to, like, move it around. But it doesn't open really, like, all the way open. But it definitely folds all the way closed. And the closed is more what you want for having to mail it. So what I did was I closed it all up, decided where I wanted it. And then I opened it and make sure that's straight. And I put, you could use fast fuse if you wanted to or tear and tape, but I put some snail and you only want to stick it on this little top part because you don't want this part to stick to that. So you're just going to close it over. Let's give it a good press. Okay. Then you flip your card over, open it up. And now this one, you can put it on the whole box. And then same thing again, just close, close your card, press it down. And then that's it. So your whole card is assembled and it's lined up better that way. So I think if you do it when it's closed, it'll make it line up. And then that way this one will stand up versus this one, which is beautiful when it's sitting. It doesn't actually stand up on its own. You could leave, you could have it so it's set there and someone could see it. But if you are one that likes to have your card stand, you would want to do it sideways. So that was really, really very simple, beautiful idea. And again, if you were going to um, do this embossing, I'm just going to show you real quick how to do this because it was very simple is all right so what I did was I kind of put my my two folders here with my big shot and then I put this so this is the softly falling so if you want things to emboss to you you want the black facing up okay so the Sizzix and the Stampin' Up you want them facing up if you want it to deboss, so if you want the holes to go, so you're going to have holes instead of raised parts, then you want to flip it this way. So that's where I went wrong, because I did one this way, and then the other one I did this way. So just backwards. So I put my um, my folder on here, and I kind of put my plate in place-ish. Just move that so it's in the way. And then what I did was I just kind of slid this in to where I wanted it to be, lined up. Just like that, and then I kind of cranked it through. And I only cranked it through partially, so I don't have this on the right. Of course, I don't have it on the right setting here. I like to use this, uh, the original folder that came with this. I just like it better than that, the second platform that came out. That's just me, personally. All right, so then all you're going to do is just crank it through. And you don't even have to run it all the way through, because you really just want to have those 
little dots on there and you can see just like that really simple and then if you wanted to you can put your other end in and I just did that the same way just kind of eyeball line it up and then same thing just crank it through again and then pull it back out okay oops I didn't push that one through far enough see now you do have to make sure you get your plate all the way in <laughs> I got a little bit of stoppage there I wasn't going quite as far as I thought I was so it happens when you're live ladies let me do that one more time okay I didn't get enough farther far enough through for pressure all right there we go Oh my gosh, it still didn't go. Good Lord. I'm being extra Polish today. Or blonde. I don't have my uh, my plate in there. That's what it was far enough. Alright, hold on. Take it back a step. This is where the flusters come in. I'm not going to get the flusters. It's Thursday. Everything's fine. All right, let's see if that worked. It might be because I have this all on a rocky surface or just normal. All right. Oh, hallelujah, it worked. Okay, <laughs> let me move this out of the way. Ah. Okay. So there it is. So you have your... Isn't it pretty, though? I mean, it really just lends something to it. And you could certainly emboss the whole thing if you wanted to, but I kind of think it looked neat with just, like, the ends being on there. So there's that one. So it stands up. And then if you wanted to do the one the other direction, all you're going to do is just turn your squares the other way. So I'll put all the measurements and whatnot up on the blog for this um, later today. So this is a very simple card, again, using Sweet Sugar Plum. And uh, we also have Pear Pizzazz. I used a color, and I used Powder Pink. Remember, pear pizzazz and sweet sugar plum, they are retiring. So if you need those, get them while they're hot. And also the Happiest of Days stamp set, retiring. Really cute stamp set, though. I really like this one for the cake as well. The cake is a beautiful one, the stamp and the birthday presents. Really simple, very easy to do. <laughs> Not just the flusters. I always had the flusters. Don't worry. It's just that you can't see me sweating. So that's why usually I take my shower after I do the lives because I sweat so profusely from doing these. Way more than you wanted to know. All right, let me clean these stamps off, and we will get set up for our other card. And I did do some of this pre-cutting, just like the little pieces, but I didn't do all of it. So we have a little bit of cutting to do, and then we'll get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this one with um, Island Indigo, which is also very sadly retiring. I love Island Indigo, but you guys, I am really excited about the new colors that are coming. Currently, I only have the um, the in colors, and I still have mint macaron because I had it from before because I liked it. So I have that. Um, aside from that, I am excited to see the new stuff that's coming out. All right, let me put these away real quick so I'm not all over the place. I'm glad we're not losing Bermuda Bay because I think I would really cry because that one is really sad. But I'm also so excited. Coastal Cabana's back. I'm so excited. This is my original pad, too. I still have. So, some things I I really, I really, really, really love. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make this Flamingo card, which everybody loved. But we're going to try it with um, Island Indigo and Calypso Coral, which might be a little dark, but we'll give it a shot. You could always make it with a lighter. You could do Blushing Bride or um, Flirty Flamingo if you wanted to, but we'll just do something different. So we're going to, we're going to start out with something different. So our base is going to be the Island Indigo. So what you're going to do is we're going to cut this in half. So this is a full size sheet and wasabi. No, I'm pretty sure pear pizzazz is going to hold on. I'll tell you for a hundred percent. Sure. I am fairly certain we're losing pear pizzazz. I could be wrong. Hold on here. Let me, Get to my color page. Oh, see, look at that. Wild Wasabi is the one that's retiring. Thank you, Donna, for keeping me straight. Look, I probably just caused the influx in the Stamping Up uh, world. Yeah, right, because I said Pear Pizzazz was retiring. <laughs> Thank you. Not retiring. Pear Pizzazz isn't going anywhere. So just in case you were having a little mental um, moment of worry that you didn't get it. Okay, so we have a eight and a half 
by 11 piece. We're going to cut this in half. We're going to cut it at four and a quarter. Yep, I was just thinking, I'm like, I think I just did that wrong, but I didn't. And then what we're going to do is we're going to score this at five and a half. So this is going to be our half sheet, okay, five and a half. And then we're going to cut it. And you could do this two different ways because this, these pieces are basically coming from this other half of cardstock. So you can either cut off your piece. So you have a two inch piece that you're going to need and it's about a one and a half ish piece. So what I usually do is I will cut off two inches from the bottom. So if you go to the two inch mark, let me do it this way. Sorry. You go to the two inch mark and you're going to cut off a piece here. Okay. And then you're going to also want this to be two inches. So I think it ends up being like an inch. Let's see where it is. It's like an inch and a half. Yeah. So it's an inch and a half. Okay. So this is your base, as you can see here. All right, so this is going to be your base piece here. So this is your five and a half piece and a two inch piece. This is your score piece right there. And then your bottom piece is going to go here. This is an inch and a half. So like that. And then you have your cross piece that's going to hold it together, which is two inches. Okay, so then I have my other little pieces cut, but I need to cut out the layers that are going to go on top of this. So the so this one was Tranquil Tide and Powder Pink. This is going to be mm, Island Indigo and Calypso Coral. So they do need to be four inches, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just trim a piece to be four inches. We're gonna, oh, let's do it this way. We're gonna cut it to four, okay? So that way it's going to line up because we're gonna have layers. And then we're gonna cut this. I kind of just did it about a sixteenth because I didn't want to have too fat of layers because if you cut it down to a quarter they're very fat layers so I just went with a sixteenth so this is going to be one and seven eighths and you're going to need two of these because it's going to layer on top one and seven eighths okay so that is for your cross piece here and your cross piece here and then you're going to have one that's this is one one and a half, and this is, should be one and one, two, three, one and three eighths. And this will be the piece that crosses onto the bottom. Okay. And then I went ahead already and I cut out the white pieces. So they're going to layer right on top of that. All right. So this is going to be three and three quarters, and I think it's by one and one and a quarter. So three and three quarters by one and a quarter. And then these two pieces will layer onto the other one. So these are going to be three and three quarters by well one and three quarters okay and then they're going to layer onto your calypso and then that's going to layer onto your um, indigo okay so we have all those pieces and again this is exactly the same as this card which i'm i'm fairly certain i've done a video for if not i will definitely repost this whole thing together i'll probably put it as one big double video with the um the first card we made and this one and i'll put all the measurements but it's very simple it's just one whole piece of cardstock or one half piece of cardstock just cut in half that's it okay so what we have to do now is we're going to keep our little white pieces on the side here and we're going to stamp them decide what we're going to do and then we'll put the whole thing together so this i thought would be really neat and just just one thing you do want to keep in mind is remember how you're stamping because i've done this before where i did it backwards so you're going to have one piece is going to be your top cross up here the skinny piece which this is the one i did backwards before is going to be your bottom cross and then you have your bird will fit on the piece that holds them together so just make sure when you stamp that you stamp them so they are logistically correct to save yourself from having to restamp them so this is the first time I've used this. So I thought we could use the um, like the little water ring and stamp that on here would be kind of fun. And then if you wanted to, you could stamp like even some of these little flourishes. You could do this on the bottom for water if you wanted to. You could put this little, um, kind of looks like a plant flourish of sorts, like a, a flower or plant. You could put that on the side, but I'm just going to do the ring for now. So this is also a new stamp set that will be in the new catalog, Peaceful Reflections. Very, very pretty, and it's very simple to be able to use. And what I'm also going to add are, you know what I should have gotten was the Flamingo. Because I love adding these little palms to the top. So we might add a few of those on the bottom. 
but we can also add the little seagrass from high tide so we can add that in just kind of on the side and we can add in the water I'm gonna put some more of the water on the front here and then we're going to also stamp the heron slash egret we're gonna stamp him and trim him out we can add in the lily pads we could also just use this this little piece here is the water if we wanted to so we'll kind of see what we're gonna do here so I'm gonna grab soft sky soft sky is absolutely definitely retiring I know that for sure because that made me really sad and I'm gonna grab pool party so I'm gonna do let's see I haven't done this one before no you're right it's definitely not retiring Donna I was wrong I checked the I looked in the catalog it's not retiring it's probably because everybody's on there right now trying to buy it before it retires just pretending so I'm going to put my little water down here at the bottom. So I did that with pool party and you can kind of add in like a few more of the little, just the water rings if you wanted to, as if like maybe he's the only guy standing there and everybody else got up and flew away. So you could do that. You could also add in your, um, this one's a long one. You could add in your little, these could be water lines. They could be grasses. So this is a pretty versatile thing as well. Just going to add a little bit of that in. And I'm going to use these on the bottom instead. I'm going to use these as the water. So I'll just stamp them. I just re-inked my soft sky. So that's why it probably looks a little darker than it normally would. And I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to add in. No, that's because I was fibbing. Yeah, that was pool party. Gosh, I am like discombobulated all of a sudden said one thing wrong and that was the end of it okay so I'm gonna those are just the water so I have my water here we're gonna add in some leafy somethings we might add in these little lily pads and I have my water and my ring there okay and pool party that was and I'm gonna leave the soft sky out because I'm actually going to add some of that in with the sponging so I'm gonna grab my soft sky and the sponge and just lightly add in a little bit of air same with this I'm gonna kind of go mostly over the middle because I'm not really sure what I want to do with it yet but that way at least fills in a little bit of that white space pear is being reconfigured that's interesting I uh I haven't been on there checking things as much as I usually do so all right so what we're going to do is I'm going to use garden green for my little sea grasses over here We'll just add those in. I'm going to add them on the bottom. So it kind of looks like he's like swampy-ish. I guess marshy, not swampy, marshish. Put some of these on the side. And I'm going to add something to the top. I'm just not 100% sure yet what. Okay. And what I might do is I think I'm going to stamp this and I think I'm actually going to trim it. Because... I want to put these lily pads on here, but now that I colored it in, I don't want it to be um, kind of like just stamped on top. So we're going to stamp this. I'm going to stamp two of them. Just have some scrap here. And I'm going to stamp these with smoky slate. Just that way I can almost make it like a new line watercolor. So I'm going to stamp this twice. This is the lily pad. I'm going to stamp it in smoky slate. That way I can hopefully color them in. And even if you had like the lighter gray, which I don't have, oh, it's definitely going into a different color group. That is absolutely true. You're right about that. So I'm going to um, color these in. I'm going to do old olive and a little bit of lemon lime twist just for a, a depth of color kind of thing. And then we'll do powder pink and flirty flamingo for the flowers. So I'm going to start, I usually try to start with the lighter color. So I'm going to start with the lighter color in the center of the lily pad. So it's kind of like lemon lime twist. And I'm not even really coloring the whole thing. Just like a little bit. I'm going to try and do it the same for both of them. Okay. And then I'm going to do um, a little bit of old olive. Now if you ever find that this is too dark, if you're doing it and you don't really like the way it's filling out, the other thing you could do, you could do this two ways. You could take your blender pen. And you can either pick up ink off of your ink pad or you can also pick it up off of your marker. So if you're, you already have this out and say you're using it, 
you can kind of use your marker just pick up some ink off of it and and blend it that way and it will definitely give you a lighter color the other thing you can do too is you could take your marker and you can kind of trace around the edge just like that and then you could take your blender pen and blend it in to your other color now remember if your gray isn't a hundred percent dry it will bring in a little bit of your gray but kind of looks cool that way because it softens it up a little bit all right so there's that and I'm amazed too sometimes Glenda how fast I can come up with ideas <laughs> I think that's kind of how my my mind works sometimes where I can I usually will look at the catalog honestly and I will go through and um look at things and just think what else could I make if I weren't using it for whatever it's intended for that's usually what I do first because I find that that way I it really helps me decide whether or not I want to get a stamp set because quite honestly I don't buy any of these stamp sets for what you guys might like and I know that might sound a little selfish because a lot of times people will buy stamp sets in the catalog based on what they think people will buy so right now again powder pink and flirty flamingo I buy them because I like them because I have a very hard time making something if I don't like it I really have a very difficult time and if Rhonda is still watching she will chime in and let you know being fake or making something out to be wonderful if I do not like it. I really am very open with my feelings. And I have a hard time faking anything. Not a good faker. So if I don't like it, I won't buy it. And a lot of times I'll see something that somebody else has done with it. And I'm like, man, that is such a great idea. Why didn't I buy that stamp set? But probably the way I looked at it, I never... It, it wasn't something where I was like, oh, I have to have that. So... Usually whatever I get, it's something that I've already looked at and I'm, I love it and I'm like, okay, what else can I make out of it that people will like, that they would want to buy it as well, that maybe they weren't thinking about getting it. Like, for example, that roller coaster card, I bought that originally because I thought it was so amazing, but I'm going to tell you straight off still, that die is the most frustrating die I have ever used in my entire life, but the stamp set's really cool and I still am trying to work on how to make it without breaking it, <laughs> but... Oh my God, yes, Christina, absolutely. It's so much easier to be creative if you like something. That is 100%. I'm going to add just a little wink of Stella to this just for the heck of it. Absolutely, it's so much easier. If you like something, you can make almost anything out of it. It, it absolutely is the truth. And this will kind of give like the glisten like water sitting on the flower since it's a watery flower. Yes, that is a good way of looking at it. If you only buy what we're going to, yep. And that's true. That is very true. I just, I, I like, um, looking at things once people put them on Pinterest because then, then I will be like, or even on Google, sometimes if I can't find an image and that's a good tip for you guys, this is how I used to find images before Pinterest came along. I would just type the stamp set into, um, Google and see what would come up with it. And actually that still is a pretty good way to do it because I think a lot of people don't really give the descriptions that you think they're going to give on Pinterest. I know I tried to for a while, but just keeping up with everything is absolutely not the easiest. And I'm just kind of doing a half way job of cutting this as a fussy cut. I'm not being super tight, so don't think I'm doing this really fast as a wonderful job. It's kind of the best I can because I don't want to make you wait too long. And the little white part that's in between, what we'll do is we'll add that little... um sponging that we pulled off with the soft sky we'll add that just to kind of mask that we didn't trim it all the way so what I do is I have my soft sky here so I'm just going to kind of go over and kind of cover up those white edges a little bit on the right side there you go so to kind of a little bit mask the, the white white part of it and I'm just going to cut this other one out real quick but if you google a stamp set so stamping up um, lovely as a tree, for example, which will come up with like a million and one ideas. But sometimes, you know, you'll, it'll be something that's new that really a lot of people haven't used yet. I, for a really, really long time, when we got that, um, always an adventure, which was the mountain stamp set, 
I thought that was the coolest stamp set. And this is something that I am very proud of, and I'm not trying to say this in a braggy way, but it was kind of cool for me, is when I Googled that image, mine was the only card that came up besides the one that was the Stampin' Up! example, which I was like, oh my gosh, that was so crazy. I can't believe nobody made more examples of that. But the problem is when you look at that stamp set, it's kind of hard to see anything but the mountains and the camping. So then I ended up doing another one, and I made it be a night scene which turned out to be really really cool as well just want to get a little bit more ink on here but it was kind of neat for a long time i was like wow my picture was the only picture on there but also at the same time that stamp set was so awesome that it really made me sad because i couldn't think of any other ways to use it but kind of the same thing with the um the the build it framelits too everybody loved that but it was kind of typecast into doing the tools so a gift. You're so nice. <laughs> I have a gift for not stopping talking. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our, our flowers on here, and I think I'm going to save one for this. And also, we're going to add a little bit of something here, and I just want to um, just want to do the uh, heron before I forget. And again, I'm going to do him in gray. And I might even stamp him off once because I can always line his feet darker. Because I want him to be really soft. Yeah, I messed that one up. Hold on. Missed his tail. Okay, so that's pretty light. Because I want to color him in just a little bit. And I'm going to make his feet a little bit darker. Move him out of the way. And this one we still have to add something to. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my flamingo set. Because I want to add these little uh, palms. I love this. I'm so glad this is carrying over. This and High Tide are one of the greatest ones for having just these little things. And even the one before I told you guys about the Christmas, um, the Christmas Pine stamp set also has those, the palms in it. Oh, it's so cool. I love that stamp set. Okay, so I'm going to do... I think, again, I'm going to go with Lemon Lime Twist for this, just to bring in a little bit of a lighter. And I don't want to do a lot, because it's not really, like, super tropical, but I kind of just want... I'm going to stamp it off a little bit first before I stamp it. I kind of just want something to fill in a little bit of that visual space up top. And then we're going to do something a little darker. How about, just for the heck of it, a little always artichoke. I'm sure there's a lot of people that probably aren't sad that this one's retiring, but I really like this one a lot. I used it quite often. Just for a little darkness. Just a little bit to the bottom. Doesn't have to be a lot. That's why I'm, I'm trying to stamp this off as I'm doing it. Okay, and let's see. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so all I have to do now is... We're going to color this little guy in, and I'm going to use my blender pen. So I'm going to do Smoky Slate with my blender pen, just to kind of fill in his body with a little bit more color. So you can either dab off of your pad, or you can take your pad and you can squeeze it, and it'll make this pool of ink. And you can still do this with the new ones. So with the new pads, even though they're a lot slimmer, you just squeeze it while it's closed, and... It will make your pool. Granted, I didn't squeeze that very hard, but it will make your pool in the center. So you can still use that, okay? So that's another really good color that I can't wait to use. But you're going to just take your, take your little guy. I'm going to put him a little bit more gray, kind of where they've already suggested that the feathers would be. And then I'm going to kind of outline this just a little bit more. Same thing with his neck, just kind of go up a little bit. Now, one thing I could have probably done was to, to, to color him in as we colored him, and I'm just gonna blend whatever I have left out. Could have probably colored his beak orange, like stamped it in gray and then added the little bit of orange to it. Although I'm not sure if they do or don't have orange beaks. If they're orange or like a little reddish. And 
And then, okay, so enough with that. I want to grab my black marker. And I'm going to do the um, fine tip pen. I want to do his eye. And I'm going to bring a little bit more in with his legs. Anybody that's familiar with birds on here know what color his beak would be. Right it in there and I'll... Uh, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of shadow underneath because I am going to trim him out. Okay, it's not going to be like right to the edge, but I'm going to trim him out. Kind of like the flamingo. Honestly, the flamingo really wasn't that hard to to trim out, even even with the legs. And this guy's legs are far, far, farther apart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back again with my blender pen and just kind of bring this out so it kind of makes it like a little bit more darker of an overall leg and you can go outside the lines on this if you're going to trim it which I'm going to so I'm just kind of eyeballing it yellow gold beak thank you all right so we'll go with I'm going to start with uh is this daffodil delight no so saffron and I'll add just a little bit of curry in okay so thank you Christine all right so we'll add a little bit here and I'm going to just use the uh, the pen point of this and just make it like a little oh, kind of more on the underneath I made there we go so it's not super yellow gold but again when you when you do it this way with the blender pen it kind of helps to lend a little bit more of the the shading to it and also we'll just take like a little bit Darker near the head. Okay, I'll put a little bit of Wink of Stella, just like he's got a little water on his back from the morning. I don't know. You know me. Everything's better with a little bit of Wink of Stella. All right. I don't want to mess with him too much more because he actually looks pretty good from far away. <laughs> All right, so one last one. We're going to just trim this out just as speedily as we can. All right, so I'm going to just do, just again, my best, just to kind of trim. I don't trim 100% close to it because what you can also do is you can go back with your marker and kind of shade the edge of where you cut. And it will make those white lines disappear. I do that a lot when I cut things out. Either sponge the edge or kind of run your marker over the edge. It just kind of gets rid of that little white line. And let me cut this out. And it makes it... um look much more realistic and three-dimensional believe it or not which sounds a little absurd but pull that off but I again I think we've talked about this a million times before I think that you have people that either really really love fussy cutting or they cannot stand it I kind of like it now when you get into these little pieces and I'm fussy cutting live on Facebook, I won't say that I like it nearly as much as if I was doing it in the privacy of my own home <laughs> without anyone watching me, but okay, almost done for that. All right. And then the tail, I kind of just like nip it as I go to kind of bring out some of those feathers. So just use just like the tip of your marker. I'm not your marker. Good Lord tip of your scissors and Stampin' Up also these are scissors that I had before I think Stampin' Up came out with the little paper snips Stampin' Up has these as well and they do cut really really well I know they don't have those big scissors like they used to that everybody loved I never got my hands on those unfortunately so I went and got just a kind of a a nice pair from um Joann's all right I'm gonna cut up the leg now this is the part where you want to be careful because you don't want to have gone through all this work just to accidentally cut off one of your legs. So just kind of go up, I go up to the edge and I'll just do the same thing with the feet. So just kind of trim his feet out, just pluck them away. If you have little tweezers, you could do that as well. Just pull them away if you're afraid you're going to snip it. And I'm going to go in from the side. Mm. Get that one already? Yeah. I can go in right here. Don't worry. Right now, myself, I'm just waiting to accidentally cut something off that I really need. Another thing you could do if you don't want to do this this much, you could do the same thing we did with the lily pads and just take your sponge and just color the inside in 
is this spot right here it's just a little yeah let me go this way i'm gonna say a little hard to go but you could sponge this in with some um pool party or soft sky and it'll blend completely and another thing you could just stamp it onto the panel that we stamped and then you don't have to worry about cutting them out and now i'm wondering i'm gonna look at my framelits there might be one that actually matches him that could cut him out for you and even get those out get this last piece all right that's good enough because i'm gonna put you can kind of put the lily pad behind him a little bit too if you wanted to so i'm gonna just take my my pool party one and i'm gonna just go over the legs a little bit just gently and then i'm gonna take my gray marker and i'm gonna show you what i did there you go that's a good idea too you could stamp it if you don't want a fussy cut so i'm gonna just outline the edge just stamp it more than once absolutely you could also, if you wanted to put them in the background, you could stamp it and kind of make yourself like a sloppy mask and mask it. That's another simple idea. And just go around the edges here, kind of a little bit at the feet. I'm not going to be so concerned with the feet, though. That's pretty good considering. Where's my lid? Okay, so let me move all this stuff out of the way. Got my this one, this one, that, that, and that. Let me move this over so I can we can put him together. Yes, absolutely. That is a super good idea. That is a really good idea, Ginger. Yeah, you could just stamp it and then just trim just the body out and pop it up. That is a fantastic idea. Make it immensely easier. All right, so now, you know what I'm thinking of now? I didn't really add any Calypso Coral to this, so I'm going to add just a teeny, teeny bit just to tie it in to the flowers just with my Calypso Coral. Kind of highlight the flower part doesn't have to be perfect you could just be like some lines that show through and I had another one here here it is and you could do this with calypso coral and old olive if you didn't like the island indigo but I really like the island indigo other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take um whoops, wrong one. I'm going to take my island indigo and where's my sponge I'm going to just sponge just a little bit and again, this is a darker color, just over, just to bring it in. There you go. All right, that's good enough. I don't want to overdo it. There is a die for the bird, I'm sure. I'm sure there has to be. Yeah, I probably just didn't grab it. Is it here? Yep, look at that. See, you could have saved yourself all that trouble. I go through to do the hard work for you. So that way, all you do is you just go in and you pull this out and look at that. You just pull your, your bird out, you run it through, boom, done, easy. But if you wanted to, you could fussy cut it, but. <laughs> Thanks, Fran. See what happens? It really takes a village to make this card. You guys think that I'm the one doing it, but honestly, you're the really the ones that are helping. So I am going to um, put these layers together. So all I have to do is just put a little bit of adhesive. I'm going to put the Calypso Coral panels onto the Island Indigo. <laughs> You're going to take, same thing with this one. This is your little skinny strip. Put that on there. And then this piece here will go onto the top of your card. Put that right up here. And I just want to, I just want to fold this. Where the heck did I put my bone folder? Here it is. I'm just going to fold that just so it stays nice and flat. Okay. So you have your piece that's going to go onto here. And I kind of like the way it is in the background. It almost looks like an overcast day instead of the way the uh, the other one looks a little bit more tropical. And this needs a little bit something more in it to kind of blend it with the rest of it. So I'm going to, I have just a little bit of that Island Indigo on my sponge here. Because I'm, I would say of all the pieces, I'm not really loving this one. This is the one I'm not loving because I don't feel like it matches as well as it could. Yeah, I have to flip this one over and do something different with it. Let me grab, let me grab my Island Indigo. Oh, I have the directions. Yep, I'll put it up on the blog. You just can ha uh, follow into the blog later. I just have to put all the stuff that we use. So I'm going to fill this in with just a little sky. And let's see. 
trying to think. See, it's a little, I'm like, right now I'm in a little bit of a conundrum because I'm trying to think. If you were to have this up top and he was in the marsh, you really wouldn't necessarily have so much marshy stuff. So, what I might have to do is something different. Let's see. What else do we have over here? We have our sun. We could have, like, masked our sun and put him on there. What we could do is we could use our tall grass and kind of put this on the side like it was marsh grass. Let me see what this would look like. Sorry, one more digression and hopefully we'll be finished this card before 1115 gets here. Clouds, yeah, I just feel like it needs something on the side. The birds, there's a good idea. Look, I was just gonna get ready and march this up. The birds, excellent idea from High Tide. Nope, not from High Tide, what is that from? The birds, no, the birds are in High Tide, you're right. Seagulls, flying through the sky. Perfect idea. So I'll add the seagulls in. Great idea. Great, great, great. Thank you, Darcy. And I'm not going to do these in black. I'm going to do them in gray to kind of, again, keep with like that muted color that I was trying to go with. So I'm going to go with smoky slate. Let me see what these look like in smoky slate. See if they're going to be dark enough. Yes, I think it'll be dark enough. Now I might I'll put these over here just to see. So there you have your birds. All right, so those are the birds if they were in the tropical background. I'm going to stamp them on the other side too, just to see. And on the other side, I'm going to do them in black. Because I feel like that might look a little better. Let's see. You guys are going to have to decide which one you like here. All right. Ooh, it's funny when you open that... Uh, Memento ink, if you haven't smelled it for a while. <laughs> it's potent. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to kind of set this down, and you guys are going to have to pick. All right, so you're going to either have just your birds flying through the sky, going to be here, all right, or we can have our little bit more muted birds that are kind of going through. So this is going to kind of cover up one of these birds. What do you guys think? That or no leaves. I kind of think no leaves, even though this is going to be a little bit dark in the background. You say muted birds. Tropical. All right, so I got muted birds and the tropical. Muted birds. So everybody seems to like this one a little bit more. Muted birds. Just birds. Oh, heavens. Just birds. <laughs> <laughs> no leaves. See, I kind of like the neat no leaves too because I think it looks more like the marsh. There wouldn't be anything back there. All right, I'm going with this one. This is the one I'm going to go with. I'm going to put the tape on it. Call it a day. All right, and again, it is going to kind of knock off a couple of these birds when we put this together. All right, so what I'm going to do, and you could off center it a little bit if you wanted to as well. I am going to put some dimensionals on the back of the other little bird here. And then, unfortunately, I only have my tiny ones. I still haven't gotten my other ones yet. Tropical. I'm sorry, tropical people. I still love you. Let's see, I'm going to cut this one in half. So these mini dimensionals are really good for the legs and whatnot, too. Oh, low power mode. All right, I got to wrap it up here. My phone doesn't like me. <laughs> Let me pull these off. And we'll put these other things on. Just means I have to go plug it in and charge it before it finishes uploading. No biggie. Ah. All right, here we go. Okay, so we're going to put our little guy here. Okay, we're going to put... <laughs> going to put our other... I'm going to put one of these... I'm going to put one of them on flat the um, lily pad and I'm going to put one of them popped up. So let's see. Let's see which one we like. So we put him over here. Technically we get him over here. We put this one down flat down here and this one could be popped up since it's kind of like, I don't know if I 
like that or not, though. Yeah. Darn it. Kind of hide his feet, though, a little bit. Okay. So, let me glue this before my phone runs out of juice. All right. So, you still do need to put your panel on the inside. Okay. So, like, when I did this one here, you put your panel. So, I filled this in. So, you kind of do the same thing. You could put your water on the bottom piece. You could put your little seagrass and kind of make the sky. You could also, if you wanted to, you could add some more muted birds on the inside. So, that would be a good idea. But in order to put this down, what I usually do is I will close the whole card like this. Okay, make sure it's nice and squarely lined up at the bottom. And then what I'll do is I will put some, I would say fast fuse, just because people are going to be opening this. Or you could use tear and tape if you don't have fast fuse any longer. And just set this kind of on where you want it. I'm going to set it over just so that one bird's not really out of the way. And you just press. And then it holds your card closed. Just like that. And it does stand up on its own. So there you go. It kind of looks cool. I really like it with the birds because you have more of the color at the bottom. The top is kind of like overcast, like a, a gray, rainy day. So you do still want to put your inside panel in and then you can kind of make it mimic what you've already stamped. But really cool card. I think this turned out really, really well. I like it a lot. Let me grab my other one. And then you have your other uh, birthday wishes and then you could use your, your sideways one as well. So this will be open this way. This one would open top ways. And then again, I really like, you know, I was, was kind of not sure if I was going to like the color combination of the Calypso Coral and the Island Indigo, but I think it looks really pretty. It definitely has a lot of pop. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope I made everyone happy today, even though we made some decisions that maybe everybody didn't agree with, but I think we did a good job since we had all of them together. So thank you guys so very much as always for watching for tuning in for putting up with the mishaps and the cuttings and almost cutting the legs off and whatnot and i will see you back next wednesday 9 30 eastern standard time which is my regular day i'm not usually here on thursdays so wednesday i will see you back i will draw a prize so make sure you've left some kind of a comment doesn't matter what it is i will draw a prize later this afternoon and give something away Thank you all for watching. I will put all the directions on the blog, which is ratesthestamper.com. Be sure you tune in there. Also, this Saturday at 10 o'clock is the blog hop, and you can always enter to win a really cool prize. There's usually at least 12 people hopping. So um, if you go in there, you just have to leave a comment with your name and hashtag stamp it contest. You'll be entered to win a prize. Usually it's like a stamp set. Sometimes it's even a full kit, which is really amazing as well. So thank you all for watching. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next week.